was it as good as the Russians claim? Was it the best tank of World War II? Or did it simply overwhelm the others due to its sheer numbers? Over the years of the war, more than 35,000 T-34 tanks were produced. Let's delve into the history of this tank from the very beginning and try to understand why it is so talked about and what it really represents. The T-34 owes much of its inception to the events in the Far East and Spain. In 1939, the Soviet Union faced the Japanese army near the Kalkangol River. Under the command of Corps Commander Zhukov, Soviet troops applied a mass tank assault for the first time, crushing Japanese forces. However, this victory also revealed the weaknesses of Soviet tanks. The Japanese, using 20mm and 37mm anti-tank guns, easily penetrated the armor of Soviet vehicles. This was a sobering lesson for the Soviet leadership, which realized the need for a new, more powerful, and better protected tank. Earlier photographs from Spain had shown Germany testing its POC family of anti-tank guns, which could penetrate Soviet tanks of that period. The Soviet leadership tasked the creation of a new tank. Designer Mikhail Koshkin, working in Kharkiv at the locomotive factory, took on the challenge. Despite setbacks with the initial models, Koshkin persisted. In 1939, the T-34 was adopted into service. The tank's production began at several factories, with key design elements remaining unchanged. Innovations included a 500-horsepower diesel engine, a welded hull, a cast turret, and a track suspension, providing high cross-country capability. Thanks to its wide tracks, the tank exerted minimal ground pressure among its counterparts, explaining its high mobility. Before the war, 1,200 T-34 tanks were produced. On June 22, 1941, when the German army attacked the Soviet Union, everything was going perfectly and the old Soviet tanks burned like matchboxes and were penetrated by German guns like cardboard boxes. This was until the new Soviet tanks appeared. In the very first days of the fighting, Guderian's units encountered the T-34, which easily destroyed German tanks at a distance of 1,000 meters. Guderian himself wrote, Our anti-tank weapons of that time could successfully operate against T-34 tanks only under particularly favorable conditions. For instance, our Panzer IV tank, with its short-barreled 75mm gun, could destroy a T-34 tank only from the rear, hitting its engine through the louves. This required great skill. Guderian's officers reported that their tank shells simply bounced off the T-34. This caused panic among the German tank crews. News of the unknown Russian tank quickly reached the Reich Chancellery. In October, Adolf and Ferdinand Porsche representing the company Krupp, flew to the Oral region to Guderian's headquarters. They jointly inspected the damaged Soviet tanks, and under the impression of this, it was decided to deliver samples to Germany for further study. In November 1941, a meeting took place at the Kummersdorf testing ground near Berlin with Adolf, Porsche, and Lieutenant General Paulus. Guderian was also present. In their presence, Various types of anti-tank guns were fired at the captured Soviet T-34 tank. Paulus, as a representative of the general staff, made several notes, and what struck him the most was that during one of the shots directly at the frontal projection of the turret, the shell from the anti-tank gun ricocheted and flew vertically into the sky. Guderian demanded that the industry representatives simply copy the T-34 and begin its rapid production for the German army but Porsche refused, explaining that it was technologically impossible due to the different manufacturing processes in Russia and Germany. The T-34 became the basis for the development of the Panther tank. Was the T-34 the best tank of the war? At the beginning of the war, it was undoubtedly one of the best. However, by the end of the war, the Panther and Tiger tanks surpassed it in performance. Nonetheless, the T-34 served as the foundation for further developments and was the basis for modern armored vehicles. It should not be forgotten that the Russians used the T-34 chassis to produce self-propelled guns, SPGs, such as the SU and ISU series, which were nicknamed Beast Killers. German tank crews were ordered not to engage these guns, 
as they used calibers of 150 millimeters and above, which could tear apart Tiger and Panther tanks. Towards the end of the war, the Russians created the T-44 tank, which surpassed the T-34, but it was not mass-produced due to concerns about disrupting existing production processes. German production also suffered from the inability to establish mass production of their best tanks, which ultimately led to Germany's defeat in mobile tank warfare. <laughs>